Hey guys, I'm Cameron Kirkconnell with Team Salt Life, and today we're gonna to talk about essential spearfishing gear. This is all the gear you need to get started spearfishing on the water. As you can see, there is a lot of different options. So today I'm at Florida Freedivers, and we're gonna talk through all the different gear, simplifying it and making it easy for you to get out there on the water. Stay tuned. So the first thing you need to do before you ever go on the water is get a fishing license for your area. In Florida, it's gooutdoorsflorida.com and you register to get a saltwater fishing license. This allows you to fish and to spearfish. Now that you can legally spearfish and you can go in the water, you need to be able to see underwater. So, masks. There's two basic types of masks for free diving. A full frame mask, which means a single piece of glass, and a dual frame mask like this. Personally, if you're not snorkeling, you need a dual frame mask because as you go down deeper and the air compresses in your mask, it's not putting as much pressure directly here on your forehead. Now when you're choosing a mask, the best thing you can do is actually go in and try it on because there's so many different options. What you need to do, pick one you like, the frame. I look for a dark, uh, a dark skirt because I want to block out as much light as possible. And you put it on your face, take a little breath in, Stop and see if it sticks to your face. This one actually fits me pretty good. And when you stop, it should stick to your face. A full frame mask like this is really common. It looks great in photos, but honestly, it's not very functional underwater. This is a great snorkeling mask, but as soon as you dive down deep, this huge pane of glass starts hitting you here in the forehead. The next thing you need to start thinking about is your snorkel. I like a very simple snorkel. This has a very comfortable mouthpiece. It's a little bit flexible and the uh, snorkel is just simple. There's nothing to break. You attach it here on the side of your head. As you dive, equalize, take the snorkel out of your mouth. Makes for an easy dive. The other option for snorkel is one that has a valve on it. This is still about as basic of a snorkel as you can get and this is actually the one that I personally use. This is a stable snorkel it's called. Very comfortable mouthpiece. It has a single valve, so when you blow out, you're not having to blow the water out the top. It'll actually blow some of it out here and take a little bit of that pressure off. So the next equally exciting part of your gear is staying warm. So your wetsuit is gonna protect your body, not only from the cold, but also from stingy stuff, laying on the bottom, laying in the sand, getting in and out of the boat, and depending on where you are, you're gonna need a different thickness. Again, I'm down in South Florida, so the majority of the time I'm gonna have a rash guard, but I travel as far north as Alaska, so I need a five to seven millimeter thick suit. When you're picking these, obviously you wanna find your size. I'm an extra large. This is an extra large. This is a kid's one. <clears throat> the insides of the suits and the materials of the suits have come light years in the last 20 years as far as the technology. The ease of putting these on is really nice, especially when it's cold. This has a titanium coating on the inside of it and is a two piece. It used to be you had to put conditioner and water in these to get them nice and slick so you could get them on. But now with this new material, you can just slide them on, which helps a lot on a really cold day. So after you've got your wetsuit, the next thing is to get a weight belt. This is really important to maintain the proper buoyancy for the depths that you're diving and to make it a lot easier. You don't want to be overweighted, you don't want to be underweighted, so you want a belt that's easy to change the weights to. The best one to get for free diving has a little bit of flexibility, has a very simple buckle that if in an emergency you can easily flip it open or you can grab this and flip it open. It has the ability to put a knife on it and you can move the weights along it. When you're putting your weights on it, I try to distribute the weights depending on how many I have so that it's even. I want them on my hip and then I want some on my back as well. For my knife position, I always put my knife in the front so that I can easily reach it with either hand. A lot of people want to put their knife on their arm or on their leg, but if you get tangled in this arm, you can't reach the knife with this hand. So here, it's very easy to get and pull out and use it as needed. So again, I like very simple gear if you haven't figured that out yet. And I want a very simple knife, bright handle, 
blade shape just like that, serration on one side. That way, when you do need to cut something like cable, or you get tangled in fishing line, or you need to cut a rope off a propeller, that serration will wear it out. It cuts it so good, so quickly. And I want one that's easy to pull out. Sharp, pointed blade, serration on one side at least, and a good sheath. Gloves. If you haven't figured it out yet, I actually really do love all the gear involved in this. And again, keep it simple with gloves. I want something with a really grippy palm. This one has a spot actually for your pole spear and it has a flexible glove all over, which makes it really easy for doing a lot of manipulating. You can do some small stuff. You can grip the big fish. You can hold your gun. You can hold the spear. You can do everything with this glove. Uh, once you get into that 65, 70 degree water, you might need something with a little bit of neoprene to keep your hands warm. And if you're diving in Alaska, you might have to go all the way up to five millimeter. But again, good grip, flexible, make sure they fit, go get them. The next essential item is actually one of the most fun and my favorite piece of gear, fins. This is what helps you get down faster, move more efficiently across the surface, and generally makes your life so much easier. There's two basic choices, plastic blades and carbon fiber blades. The main difference in these, carbon fiber wants to come back straight. So as you kick, you're gonna flex that blade, it's gonna look like this, you're gonna flex, and as soon as you stop kicking, it's gonna snap back in position like that, which helps you not have to kick it back the other way. Plastic, underwater, remember there's a lot of resistance with the water, are not gonna snap back as fast. And you can see it kind of retains its shape a little bit more. So these are a great entry level plastic blade. And if you're gonna do this for a little longer, wanna dive a little bit deeper, carbon fiber is definitely the way to go. As you can see, there are a ton of different options for foot pockets, blades. You just need to come in and see what the best option for you is, although, Plastic is definitely where I think you should start. This is a Hawaiian sling, the most basic of spearfishing weapons. You have a shaft, you have a shooter. Shaft goes through the shooter, sits in this little cup, and it's basically a bow and arrow underwater. To shoot it, you hold the back of it like this so the shaft doesn't come out. Pull like that, and you're aiming down the shaft. And when you're ready to shoot, you would open this hand and let it rip. I like to hold it right about there and shoot it. This shaft goes free, and you start chasing them down. <laughs> very simple, very effective, very fun. So now the most exciting part of your spearfishing kit is gonna be your spear gun or pole spear. Deciding what you're gonna use usually depends on what area you're gonna be. Personally, I use a lot of pole spears because I love the challenge and it really makes you get really close to the fish. It's a very simple setup, basically a stick with a pointy end and a rubber band at the back. To load these, put it in your hand like that, advance your hand, hold on tight, and I always aim down my thumb. So I'm looking like this, and then when you're ready to shoot, you just open your hand, and it's gonna rip straight forward. This is a very basic, very simple, great way to learn spearfishing and to learn fish. This makes you get close, because the range of a pole spear is basically how far you have it loaded. So on this tiny little spear, which is used for flounder, lionfish, lobster in the Bahamas, you're only shooting two feet, so it's gotta be pretty close. These big ones that you see behind me, you can have it loaded six feet, seven feet, so you have a seven foot range for some of these bigger fish. There's a couple of different types of tips, but when you're starting out, a simple flopper tip like this is the way to go. Fish goes on there like that, flopper opens, and fish can't come off. All right, so now we're to the really fun part, which is the spear gun and the associated equipment with that. Spear gun, again, I like a very basic, very simple gun. This is the most comfortable handle for me. This is called a rear handle Euro gun. And very simple, two bands, shoots a, a shaft attached to monofilament, which is attached to the front of the gun. 
So as you can imagine, if you go down deep and shoot something, you're not gonna wanna fight it all the way to the surface. So this blue line over my shoulder is a float line, which you will clip off to the back of your gun. And the other end of that, you'll clip off to the front of a buoy. I like to have a buoy that has a dive flag so that boats can see you and your boat can see you and also you can see it. So when you shoot a fish, you can come to the surface, take a breath, grab the line and start pulling it up from the buoy. The other option, if you don't do a buoy, and this is a little more advanced thing, is having a reel. The reel mounts on the gun and attaches to this line so that when you shoot, the shaft goes free and the line starts paying out just like when you're fishing from a boat. That allows you to get to the surface and then take a breath, fight the fish and bring him up to the surface. The best thing to do when you're using a reel is to leave the drag very light so that it's easy to pull line out when you are fighting a fish. So more than likely the fins that you've worn in your life, you have not worn booties. I highly suggest wearing booties. It's gonna protect your feet, it's gonna make it more comfortable and you're gonna be able to spend more time in the water. Two basic types, short, long, the longer ones are better suited when you're wearing a wetsuit because you can tuck these inside and it keeps your whole leg warm and no water gets in. The shorter ones, people like them for summertime when they're not wearing anything but board shorts or a bathing suit. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today to talk through essential spearfishing gear. Again, there's so many different options. The number one thing I suggest is go to your local shop, try everything on, listen to the local knowledge for where you live to get the right gear. I'm Cameron Connell for Team Salt Life. Thank you guys and we'll see you next time.